Uh, Ali is the Global Director of AI and ML Strategy and Technologies at NXP Semiconductors. So Ali is a technology and business leader with 25 years experience in processor core IP, software, semiconductor hardware, AI, and machine learning. And prior to joining NXP, Ali led all the product development as VP of engineering at Cogniview. Uh, so uh, with uh, without further ado, I will turn it over to Ali and uh, Ali, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, hi, everyone. Um, uh, thanks again for the intro. I'll just jump straight into it. Um, from our side, I wanted to talk about um, how to use TinyML um, in um, predictive maintenance and anomaly detection without adding any additional costs to your to your bomb, basically. Um, very quick recap on who NXP is as a semiconductor vendor, processor vendor. Uh, we deal in um, a very wide portfolio of um, devices like MCUs and um, traditional MCUs, uh, what we call our crossover MCUs, which add a lot more uh, capability and um, also applications processors. And the tiny ML aspect for us is anything that has a Cortex M core, uh, for example, and um, it, you know runs with an RTOS and is more real time. The motor control market um, on that side is um, there's uh, you know different uh, segments like the industrial segment, the IoT consumer segment, uh, automotive segment. Um, and here you can you have motors uh, deployed across um, almost everywhere and every um, aspect of our life. And we're seeing that um, you can have anomaly detection and predictive maintenance apply to uh, a lot of these use cases. And what we've uh, done is further look at um, the application spaces that are um, in terms of like motors for, uh, detecting uh, anomalies in terms of bearing failure or uh, a propeller blade damage, for example, in an HVAC system and air conditioning, which could apply to uh, industrial, could apply to smart buildings, smart homes, um, or even just regular homes in, in terms of your own air conditioning and heating uh, venting systems. Uh, in the home, again, uh, around appliances, both industrial and consumer, you can have uh, compressors in like something like a refrigerator uh, that could have uh, a motor or a pump that could um, have a failure. And uh, of course, depending on where it's deployed, uh, a downtime or remaining useful, uh, useful life metric as Chris introduced is extremely critical in terms of the efficiency of the system and costs overall to the maintenance as well as cost to the downtime aspects. Uh, and closer to home, uh, for most of us, um, you know, we're looking at smart appliances, adding uh, functionality to things like dishwashers, washers, dryers in the home. Uh, and here, uh, two of the use cases that we've uh, worked on for and uh, customers have been around detecting an unbalance um, in uh, in the drum, in, in the um, how clothes are distributed in the washer uh, or classifying the weight um, towards creating some level of uh, efficiency. So you can use uh, and doing this without adding uh, additional sensors. So you're not adding another weight uh, uh, sensor, you're not adding a vibration detector, uh, you're trying to leverage the available um, uh, microprocessor that you have and the signals that you're already working with overall. Um, a typical uh, motor control, just to um, you know, remind everyone, um, so you have uh, a microprocessor uh, that has your CPU, has a, an amount of RAM. If it's a microcontroller, you have um, a flash memory associated with it. Uh, potentially, then you have your peripheral control and uh, motor control algorithm that's running on the CPU and, and the connectivity to it. And then you have a motor driver circuit that controls the motor. And this could be uh, a variety of different motor technologies exist. Um, talking about DC motors here, it could be an AC motor, it could be a uh, PMSM uh, type of setup. Now we have, of course, you know, EV vehicles, and it can scale up to a full vehicle. It can scale up to a full uh, factory floor. Um, etc. In as in any um, other ML um, solution, uh, data is extremely uh, important. Uh, I know a, a colleagues from AIZIP um, discussed about uh, unsupervised and semi-supervised and going towards collecting data on a device, on the runtime device. Um, but a lot of um, Supervised systems still uh, require uh, a data collection. I mean, in general, all of ML 
is uh, is a data problem to a certain extent, and uh, data in um, anomaly detection and predictive maintenance is also um, still a very important topic. And collecting data um, becomes quite critical uh, in trying to reproduce and create uh, best-in-class, state-of-the-art models for specific use cases and detecting what is an anomaly and then tying that anomaly towards uh, a failure in time to do predictive maintenance calls. Um, so we've uh, we've set up, um, you know, both lab setups in uh, leveraging uh, a simplified like loading system, for example, for a motor to simulate in a washing machine an unbalanced load uh, situation. So you have two motors um, almost working against each other in terms of a um, having a asymmetric load. So you have one motor um, trying to drive the load and the other one creating um, the, the load itself. And you can measure uh, different settings and different setups and collect uh, the physical quantities around uh, these things in a, in a lab setting. And then you go into, um, so that's one way of creating somewhat of a, a lab setting data creation uh, set up. And you can also collect data and also validate what you're uh, doing in your uh, motor loading system with loading it in, in an actual washing machine. So distributing weights within, within a machine, uh, emulating what a um, normal distribution is, and then offsetting that against uh, by adding weights uh, in certain parts. And we have labs uh, to do this to replicate both for our customers who are some of the leading uh, appliance vendors, as well as um, uh, you know, other uh, modalities that are not uh, washing machines or involve motors outside of that. And um, so then you're collecting your data. And here, as I mentioned, we're trying to do it without adding any additional sensors or any other uh, bill of materials costs and no other um, processing um, elements into it. So we're leveraging the, the voltage and current measurements that you're getting out of the existing uh, motor control and microprocessor in line, uh, there's a normal operation loading that you can see in um, in your current and voltage lines, and you leverage that into uh, determining what a normal operation and status of the health of the motor is during operation. And then anything that uh, varies um, between that and your observed signals, you can see variations in the peaks of your signal, uh, which changes uh, in terms of the loading that you see. Um, and you can observe uh, anomalies, you can observe uh, loading patterns and make um, draw inferences out of this observed um, changes in your uh, current and voltage uh, signals. Uh, we've applied this to, um, as I mentioned, um, one of the um, washer use cases around detecting uh, unbalanced loads, detecting when um, you know a laundry is not evenly distributed, especially as laundry, depending on what the uh, fabric is, um, uh, what amount of uh, water it's soaked, how much of that it retains. Um, you can actually cause quite a bit of damage or wear and tear into the springs, into the motor, um, and detecting when you have an unbalance, trying to slow down and ramp up in uh, especially the uh, parts of the wash program uh, can be quite beneficial to the overall life of the device and detecting when things are um, not going well. So in that, um, to prevent failure from an unbalanced, um, what an unbalanced load can cause to, to, the, to the springs, if it's a direct drive, it actually can uh, burn the motor uh, itself. Um, detecting this and then changing the way the wash cycle responds, cycles up and down the RPMs in, um, in it. We've, uh, we've built out a set of um, different models that can be applied to the same thing, measuring uh, in 100 gram increments up to a kilogram in this use case of uh, the unbalance and how it's distributed in the machine then leveraging that towards um, deciding uh, what max RPM the machine can hit, what uh, and what it can't, and then leveraging that towards um, a more efficient wash program is um, something that you can build with TinyML on the existing microprocessors that you have in the system. What this requires, of course, is that you do have a bit of overhead available in the overall resources of that microprocessor in the, in the mix. Uh, so we've done this, uh, demonstrated it, for example, on a very traditional microcontroller with a total of 64 kilobytes of flash and 16 kilobytes of RAM. Um, the application itself, the actual motor control application, was using about 50K of the, the flash um, and um, 
12K of the 16 kilobyte of RAM. And that available room was enough to uh, build out a full solution that could check on the the motor state and the motor health um, and um, still um, provide a value add and an improved uh, user experience potentially uh, without increasing your bomb cost. And we do have um, resources around all, all that NXP offers and very happy to discuss it in the Q&A or at later date. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chris. Great. Thanks, Ali. Uh, so you've uh, taken it to the extreme in the case of reducing the cost by eliminating the sensor entirely. Uh, so it's just the actual yeah. raw uh, current and voltage measurement itself and the processing of that. So very interesting.